Today, I'm going to teach you how to properly transport an Albion online. This is another thing that I see so, so many people get wrong in this game, alright? What they do is they will get a, a transport mammoth, perhaps a transport ox, a boar, a bear, whatever it is. They are going to be transporting either like faction hearts, maybe they're transporting goods to refine, Maybe they're transporting cheap materials from one town to another. Maybe they're making a dangerous run from Bridgewatch to Care Leone or vice versa, right? So, here's what I see that everyone does wrong. They go completely naked. They just, they, they might have a backpack on, and they might have shoes on, and the shoes might have something like Courier, so they can carry more weight, and that's fine. Well, it's not really fine, okay? So, you're running around and you're transporting naked. Here's here's the, st st the statistics, okay? Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. Why you shouldn't transport naked at all, okay? So, we're going to take we're going to take the shoes off just to show you. So, here's a mob. We're going to be using him as a little damage test. And yes, I'm aware that these are all this is test run max spec stuff. It doesn't matter. You, you can do this in flat 4 and you'll get about the same results, just a few points difference, okay? So, here I am naked on a tier 8 ox, okay, tier 8 ox has 2.2k health, it has 277 armor, and so on and so forth, okay? So we're gonna let Greybeard here throw a rock at us, that rock dealt 224 damage, you can see it right here in the combat log, and he's still chasing me, okay? Now what we're going to do, to make this a little bit better, we're just gonna put on a regular piece of plate armor, okay? Plate armor, it does not matter which plate armor you use. Guardian armor is the cheapest, but also one of the most efficient. Let me talk about efficiency, okay? What we're looking at here is the armor gained and the crowd control resistance. The only two armors that beat Guardian armor are the Judicator armor and the armor of Valor. That's it. You don't need to spend lots of money on a transport set because if you're truly ganked by 20 guys, you're going to mostly kind of sort of die anyway. But just having something on, just having a shirt on helps amazingly, okay? So go ahead and get yourself a Guardian Armor. Now let's look at the damage just this piece of armor gives. And yes, it's tier 8, even if it was tier 4, look at this, 129 damage. So we negated almost uh, a little under 100 damage per hit, okay? Players are going to be hitting you much harder than Greybeard here. Now, you can further strengthen this by equipping other plate items with the passive of more defense. But just to show you, it's not that super important, okay? You can also equip... Uh, an offhand that has defense versus mobs or players. But and you can see here, I'm going to show you in a bit why that's not super important either. For your weapon, now there's a few reasons why you would want a certain weapon when transporting, okay? Here's the, here's the deal. If you leave the radius of your mount or your mount is dead, you now have to carry the burden of, of your carry weight. So let's say I despawn the mount, but I'm under 100%. This weapon, this mace, I have a silence where I can throw down, where if enemies are in it, they can't use their chase or crowd control abilities. I have two jumps with the mace. Also, the mace, uh, it passively gives you more HP and health regeneration than other weapons. The next best thing would be a double-bladed staff, but you can see here it gives less HP and, and health regeneration. So, this one has two jumps. Uh, the double bladed staff has one jump. There's no reason not to use the mace. The mace is one handed, which lets us use a shield. We can pop on a shield for more crowd control resistance and defense against mobs and players. Then finally for the cape, you can use something like a Martlock cape to increase your defense if you're dismounted. However, you could also use the Fort Sterling cape, which is what I recommend, so that whenever someone tries to crowd control you and kill your mount, the cape eats the first one and you can keep running away. Also, for potions, you have invisibility, so you can help escape. For food, you can use a pork pie to carry more weight. A lot, lot more weight than using courier or a higher tier bag. You should really use pork pie before anything else when calculating how much weight you need to transport, okay? With that said, if I put on all this stuff, and again, spec only really matters for bonus health, not so much for defense. Let me show you how much this guy hits for now. Okay. He hit for 121. That's with the full set on, okay? Now, if you want to take this further beyond, like if you're transporting in yellow zones for some reason, yes, you could put on an Astral Aegis. You could wear 8.3. And let me show you, it's not that much of a difference. We went from 121 down to 110. So you take 11 less damage for an insanely high amount of cost. And if I could show you, I would do this in flat 4. You're still going to take a heavily reduced amount of damage in flat 4. 
So to finalize the build in my recommendations, if you are transporting for like to Carleon, here's my absolute recommendation, okay? You can actually go on to your destiny board and see the stats of every tier of Ox. I recommend at least a tier 6 Ox or tier 5, okay? A person with 8.3 and maximum spec will have difficulty dismounting you solo on a tier 6 ox. It's still possible, but it's hard. You have to really mess up. If they have lower specs and not 8.3, they will have difficulty dismounting you on a tier 5 ox, okay? Tier 4 and tier 3 oxes, you can see they have much less armor and HP. And remember, the armor that you have is combined with the armor of your mount. Okay, now obviously, if you're going through the red zone, I would use a cheap ox, I would not use a bear, but you could use a bear um, if you want. It's a really, really, really big min-maxi on your survival, though bears are slower, so your transporting will take longer, okay? Uh, boars, you, can't, you can transport more, and you can transport with a boar while having your mount killed or out of your mount's range. But ultimately, the cheapo build is use tier 5 or tier 6 ox, Use just tier 4 flat guardian armor, guardian boots, guardian helmet with a standard shield and a mace. This is super, super cheap. And then use a Fort Sterling cape if you're really afraid of crowd control. Most of the time, I don't even use a cape at all. I think the cost isn't, isn't worth it. Though sometimes, if I buy a cape from Bridgewatch and I travel to Care Leone and the cape sells for more at Care Leone, it's totally worth it for me to bring anyway, because most of the, these things will sell for more in Care Leone than they will from where you bought them from. Same goes for, well, not invisibility potions. Uh, you want to export those out of Care Leone, so you can buy like one invisibility potion at Care Leone when you reach Bridgewatch if you didn't have to use it. That's that's a little bit extra profit for you. And then, of course, the pork pie is just so you can carry more stuff. Don't use expensive bags. Use the cheapest bag you can get away with, okay? And with that said, that is how you can withstand much more damage uh, while transporting. Even if you're on a mammoth, the damage negation is huge, and it is absolutely in your best interest to wear some form of armor when doing transports. Also, there's another person on the test realm here with me, so that's pretty cool. Uh, anyway, <laughs> with that said, I'm Soul Benji. Thanks for watching. As always, be a bro and stay soul. If you have any friends that do transports, if you yourself do transports, hopefully you learned something today. I don't want to see any more naked transports. That's so weird. You're just painting a target on yourself. Guys, uh, if you want to make videos every day on this channel, make sure you're subscribed, okay? Make sure you're su sub bleh, subscribed so that you don't miss tomorrow's video. You don't want to miss it because it's probably a good one. Maybe it's not. I don't know. If you want to financially support me, click the thanks button and leave a one-time monetary donation. Uh, if you leave a big enough donation, it changes the color of your entire comment. It shows how much you donated. It's a really big and cool flex, and it really helps me out a lot. Finally, become a channel member by clicking the join button. That is five bucks a month, and it really helps me out. You get access to private, more personal videos. Check out the pinned comment for a members-only playlist. Those videos in particular you can only watch if you are a channel member. Otherwise, YouTube won't let you do it. One of those is how to become a YouTuber. I made it for myself in case I suffer memory loss and get bonked on the back of the head, you know, uh, and forget who I am and how I do YouTube. I made it for myself so I can get back on my feet and start making YouTube videos just as efficiently as I do today. So if you have a friend that wants to be a YouTuber or you yourself want to be a YouTuber and you're sick of getting like 20 views a video, check it out. Five bucks a month to become a channel member. It's like being subbed on Twitch, but it's on YouTube and YouTube is better than Twitch. Anyway, thank you so much. I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. Mwah.